hello 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 everyone hello everyone who is going to um, join this live and hello to everyone who is going to watch the replay my tiktok is on fire <laughs> It looks like I am going to have to um, be the devil's advocate, and I'm okay with that. I usually am really someone who um, always takes a stance against the um, popular opinion. Um, I'm never one who just goes with the flows and one who gobbles things down that has absolutely never never been the woman that I am, not even the child that I was, so let alone for now. I am just going to go d dive right in. You guys already know why we are here. Now, I am going to say that probably a couple of people from TikTok are going to come and join this live. Um, listen, First, let me apologize for being a little bit late for those of you who were probably waiting, waiting for me to be here at 9.30 at the dot. But I was really waiting for not only the house to get quiet, but also the neighborhood to be very, very quiet. This is a very important live. I was not expecting to be live at the end of July. I was getting myself ready to make myself back in in August. But when I saw what was going on with the U.S. election and definitely when I saw, started to see the popular opinion of women coming out of the woodwork talking about that they would vote for the vice president, I said, girl, you have got to do your job. It's really important to inform the American public of the global perspective or your perspective regarding the candidacy of Donald Trump. That will be the focus for tonight. I am not here to debate anyone. Listen, if you want to go check this TikTok and those comments, it's on fire. And it was probably, even when I saw everything, I could see that so many people were waiting for me to come on live. So many people were waiting for me to say something about the recent events. But, you know, anybody who is very, very familiar of the work that I do here, listen, we've already established like that these elections were going to be very, very pivotal, not only for the United States of America, but for the world. And anybody who is extremely familiar with the work that I do, I've already shared with you guys that from my perspective, I shared this to you that I already saw it coming a mile away. You have got to know, and I'm, I'm really, this live that I'm doing, this is really for the American public because when I mean, even with the recent events, the attempt, the assassination attempt on the candidacy of Donald Trump, I still didn't feel the need to come on here and talk because we've already established, I've already spoke on so many things. I've already shared with you why this guy was not, not even liked, was hated, what the threat that he represented for this um how can I say the threat that he represents for the um, establishment, the, the, the usual establishment of the USA from a global perspective? I've already elaborated. I've been doing this work. I've been doing it for the longest of time. And for the past five years, I've, I've elaborated for you exactly what was going to take place here in this country of IT which we've seen and I've shared with you that I didn't think that this um, il those election were going to be easy. Absolutely not. So I am not here to debate you about any of your opinion regarding why you are opposed to Trump if you are a black person, the Confederate 
I am a Haitian woman. I understand I've lived in the U.S. I am a U.S. citizen as well. But thankfully, thankfully, having dual citizenship or rather having been, you know, yes, I was born in the States, but I grew up like we are. I am, I consider myself pretty much a, a Haitian person. And I grew up here in the country of Haiti. When you are able to live in a different environment, what it does for you is that it really gives you a different views and a different perspective regarding another country that you may be moving into. Unfortunately, the problem and the danger with the people of the USA is that they definitely have you guys conditioned on this black and white thing. And that's why they made the choice that they made recently. What they, I mean, listen, we are in July, moving in August. When have you ever seen something of the sort happen in an election of that caliber? Come on, guys. When have you ever seen something happen like this? And such an election, it's because they they were looking at it and they already saw a win for Donald Trump. They already saw that President Biden was losing. And I mean, who was going to vote for that man again, right? So they had to think fast. This is why they orchestrated. And when, you know, like I said to you, even with the attempt, the assassination attempt, I didn't feel the need to come online to defend the president because I said I've already talked about so many things. Let's see how things were going to play out. However, when I woke up and I heard that President Biden was, you know, coming out of the race, but then I heard that the vice president was the woman who was, I said, oh, hell no. I said, oh, hell to the no, you're going to have to come. Because automatically, I knew that as soon as they put her out, you would have so many women, so many black people who would feel a certain type of, um, I don't even want to say related, but who would automatically feel it's the same thing that they did with Hillary Clinton, with Hillary Clinton, I was 10 years younger. With Hillary Clinton, I had not yet made my transition, my final transition back to Haiti. With Hillary Clinton, I too played heavily, believe it or not, when it was the race, the democratic race, I was definitely one of those people who voted for Hillary Clinton's against President Obama, all because let's, again, let's be very clear. I was 10 years younger. So because I was young and because I couldn't understand the truth, because I couldn't really understand politics, because I was, even though I was very prone with my country's political, but I didn't make the ties. I didn't understand how it the all politics relates now even more so. I didn't really understand that. So I voted for Hillary Clinton. And yet again, as a young person, I never forgot the election of President Obama the first term. The majority of young, he had a lot of young voters. So many of us voted for him because President Obama represented changed. Not only because he was the first black man who would have been elected in the U.S., but because, you know, he represented everything that people could dream of. He really represented the American dream. And what was the American dream? The American dream is that someday anyone, this is why so many immigrants are coming to the USA, because still in 2024, the USA represents the land of the free. 
freedom. It represents democracy, democracy. The USA represents what anyone who wants to be free wants to live, where they want to live still today. So when President Obama came, he definitely reflected that. So everyone went out to vote. It was a guaranteed win for him. A guaranteed win for him. So you mean to tell me that twice? I'm not a fan. Listen, I am not only a Haitian woman. I live in Haiti and I do groundwork in my country. I've done this since I was 20 years old. I'm 40. So do the math, okay? Even with all of the experience that Hillary Clinton had, right? Even with all of the experience that Hillary Clinton had, she still lost twice those elections. She lost against President Obama. And when she went back, she lost again in front of Donald Trump. However, we have a different time. We have different ball games. These are very, very crucial elections. And to see how the establishment of the U.S. government is willing to bet on a woman who is not even qualified. That woman is as incompetent as I have ever seen. This is one of the worst administration of all times. Please elaborate and let me know what these people have been doing. I have never seen that woman worked in this administration. I don't know what they have accomplished outside of money laundering and lies and lies and lies. So the establishment of the USA, just because of the threat that Donald Trump represents for them, because he is willing to go against all odds. He is willing to go against the grain. So not only are they attempting to, attempted to take his life away, which I predicted that this was going to go down, and I'm pretty sure that he knew that as well. I'm pretty sure this is why when it happened, I said, thankfully, I know that, you know, he is su supported by the heavens, but I also knew that him and his family are pretty much aware of the threat that he represents, right? Still, to go back to what we were saying, these do you guys understand what these people are trying to bet against? And truth be told, I should really be happy because a woman like Kamala Harris as the U.S. president, oh my God. God, God, God bless you people over there. Are you kidding me? Do you understand the times of today? Do you understand the global shift that the world has already undertake? Do you understand the position of countries in the Middle East? Do you understand that the majority of the chaos that we are having right now is either supported by the present U.S. administration, the U.S. government, or they have an involvement in it one way or another? Do you see the madness and the mess that's going on in that, this administration regarding immigration? Oh, my God. So they are willing to bet against such a fragile state of economy of USA and put a woman who is incompetent, a woman who I don't even know what she knows about politics, let alone global politics. Ladies and gentlemen, please enlighten me. Do you really believe that that woman 
has the capability to enter into wounds of discussions in such a state of where right now we're having a war right in the Middle East. We have a war between the Israel and Palestine. We have a war, Russia and Ukraine. Is Kamala Harris capable of entering discussions that is going to benefit not only the United States, but global world? That woman is always laughing as if she's constantly high. She's always laughing as if she's completely, constantly drunk. Where, where, where is it? It looks like whatever the situation was with President Biden, with him not being able to speak, but it doesn't look like it's a problem for him. It looks like it's a problem for his entire cabinet, if I have to be really honest. When have you, I mean, maybe, I don't know, please enlighten me. And like, I just could not believe it. Twice, and no, I am not a fan of the Clintons, but we're going to give credit where credit is due. Even though Hillary Clinton did a lot of wrongs with her policy making, her and her husband, even though the o Obama administration did so much wrong in the continent of Africa, we're going to say that Hillary Clinton had a lot of competence she has if you know of her story she definitely has a lot going on that she could have been become the president of the united states yet they were not willing to let her be the president of the united states then and yes at that time i do believe that it had to do with the fact that she was a woman not necessarily that they felt that she was incompetent or anything of the sort. Absolutely not. I do believe so. But they were not ready to have a woman president. But they despise, they despise, that's the word, Donald Trump so much that instead of having him as the president of that country, they are willing to bet against all odds and put a woman who is incompetent. If Kamala Harris can be the president of the United States, I am wishing that I was over there. I would have run for president as well because I believe that she cannot come near some of us. <laughs> that woman, it's a no, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. And it's so funny that I'm starting off like this because truthfully, I was not even going to touch on her. I just really wanted to focus on the candidacy of Donald Trump. But just before I came on live, I stopped and looked at my TikTok where I had posted just to let people know that I was going to come. And let me tell you the level of nonsense over there and the commentaries coming from black people, women telling me, all type of nonsense about the fact that as a black woman, as a Haitian woman, I choose to size with people with the Confederate flag. Oh my God. This is why I started a slide like this, ladies and gentlemen. I just cannot believe the times of today. So before we jump on the note, I really need for everyone who is going to watch and rewatch and for everyone who is here to understand this. This election or the most crucial election as a U.S. citizen, you are allowed to vote anywhere. You can vote online. You can you should have registered online. You can vote at any U.S. embassy. You can also vote in the consulate. It is very important that you cast your vote. Those elections are going to dictate the shift of this world. And with everything that I have endured here in this country, with everything that the people of my country have endured, I'll be damned if I don't stand up for the candidacy of Donald Trump. 
I would be damned if I do not stand for those candidacy. Now, you're going to say that I am playing devil's advocate because the reality of it is that the gimmick that these people have going on, not only like right now, my audience and the people that I'm targeting are mainly U.S. citizens. But it goes deeper than that because if we even analyze the majority of immigrants, especially those Haitian people who are sadly not understanding not only politics, but they're not understanding everything that has been going on, they have them believing that as soon as Donald Trump comes into power, he's going to ship back all of those immigrants, correct? But what people are failing to understand is that you have an affluence of immigrants over there in the United States because of the Biden administration. But you, oh my God, perspective, ladies and gentlemen, perspective. For those of you who are going to hear me out, I am wanting you to understand that the perspective that I'm coming to you from it's not from a perspective of someone who is over in the USA. I'm coming to you from the perspective of someone that your election is going to affect and determine. Everything that's been going on here in this country of Haiti has been at the beck end of the Biden administration. Of course, with the corrupt government that we have here. Of course, if President Trump had been in office, not only would we have not had the assassination of our president, I'm very, very certain that the war that's going on between Israel and Palestine would have not been as well as the war between Ukraine and Russia. When the man says that he is respected, he is respected. And he is not saying that he's respected because he's a man. No. There is a certain things when you know, I do believe that this is a candidate that knows about foreign policies, that know how to get his point across, that know how to mix deals. When President Trump was in power, Haiti had already started to go through a lot of uproar. However, we didn't have what we have here. What we have here has been dictated and co-signed by the Biden administration. So for those of you who probably are feeling a particular way about all these afflux of immigrants that have been coming into your country, about the job market and everything, you got to blame no one but the Biden administration. Their entire administration has sponsored what's going on here in Haiti. It's crucial and it's major that you understand politics. Unfortunately and sadly, a lot of you are, well, which is understandable, you are American, so you're looking at your politics as internal. <laughs> But what you're not seeing is that your politics actually trickles down through the Caribbean, Latin, South America. Whoever you guys are electing is going to dictate a lot of what's going on in our countries and now so even more so. So you mean to tell me that at the break of dawn of such power, such as the BRICS, you going to put a woman like Kamala Harris to direct the United States of America? Ms. Um, are you kidding me? What exactly are you trying to, where, where are you people trying to get this country to go? Because at the end of the day, I would love the opportunity to go back to the States if things don't work out here in Haiti. But the way things are looking at it, I don't even want a vacation over there. Who goes to the U.S. these days? To do what? I don't even want to be over there for vacation. The United States has lost its stature in front of so many other countries. And now to 
these people tell me that they want to put a woman like Kamala Agis as the, oh my God, it's a no. See, the problem that they're having is that Donald Trump was, it, it was a guaranteed win. It's a, that's why I was just like falling back and just looking at things play out because I was like, oh no. I was looking at Joe Biden. I was like, oh no. I said, oh no. And they saw it too. So many people understood the gimmick. So many young people, young voters. People were even saying that they were not going to vote because it's like people who probably were not fond of Donald Trump were saying, well, you know, we're still not voting for Biden. So instead, what they did, they asked or they, they fabricated this lie where they decided to have him step down and put Kamala. And automatically, this is why I had to come here because as soon as she placed that she, they were you know, putting her in, you had people who did, people who are not even tapping into politics. As, you know, when they, you would ask them questions or they're like, oh, uh, okay. Oh, oh, really? We're putting Kamala? Oh, okay. So automatically they are considering her out of the account that she's a woman and out of the account that she's black. Babe, let me tell you something. These people don't give a damn about you just because you are a woman, just because you are black. So if you're going to vote Kamala Harris because she's a woman and because she's black, just because you are a woman, you're, you're making a fool out of yourself. It's a gimmick. We are in 2024. Are we not understanding? And when are you people going to stop letting these people play with your mind? It's a game. They're just counting on that to save their bullshit. Oh, I'm voting for her because she's a woman. No, she's incompetent. She doesn't know how to work. Think about it. So you want, do you want her to represent you? In front of certain leadership, does Kamala Harris has that stamina, that guts, that experience? Is she competent? Can she talk? Ladies and gentlemen, oh my God. No, we're not doing this. No, I will be here every week. I will begin posting videos starting in September back to back. We are not doing that. It's a no. It's a no. It's a no. And it's a no. If you guys knew how much politics intertwine with one another in countries, the minute that this administration came out with a woman like Kamala Harris, as a candidate, it, the numbers should have just went down, completely down. I can't believe that 10 years ago, they played the same monopoly, the same game with Hillary Clinton. Unfortunately, the establishment was not ready to have a woman president. But today in 2024, with what we are having, with the madness that's going on worldwide, with a new currency. See, I should be happy about her becoming the president because that would mean that the U.S. would lose complete power. But still, somewhere in my heart, I'm still a proud American. Somewhere in my heart, I'm looking at it that, oh no. Because at the end of the day, the relationship between Haiti and the U.S. is big. It's big. And I know that everything that we've had endured had, has been because of them. So just imagine another four years of these individuals. No. People, when you, when you think about immigrants, they're looking at temporary situation. And basing these, those temporary situations on long-term, meaning 
I'm going to read the notes. To be really honest with you, I am at four pages and I'm not done. So I do believe that I'm going to have to turn it into a video, but I still wanted to come here and I just had to come here. I just felt like the more days that were coming and the more people that started to come out and the, it's going to get worse because it's a, it's a vindicta, vendetta, excuse me. It's a, it's a pure vendetta against the candidacy, against the person of Donald Trump. It's a total vendetta against him. So I just, I said, you got to come out. You got to talk. You got to make people see a different perspective. So that's why we're here. It's so that you see a different perspective when I talk about the crucial importance of such an election and truthfully why everybody should vote Trump. There's no other way. Who are you going to vote for? I was looking at it. Some people are saying that, okay, Kennedy is there, but I'm not hearing anything about Kennedy if he's still on the run. It looks like it's only Donald Trump and now it's Kamala Harris. So there's, it's not even a question. It should not be any doubt. I mean, those, I mean, as soon as they said Kamala all U.S. citizens should have been like, oh, no, hell to the no. Whether you black, white, green, women, transgender, it should have been like, F no, we're not doing this. Oh, my God. I just cannot believe this. These people will go so far in order not to have Donald Trump be the president oh no november i cannot wait so the focus of this live is our candidate donald trump now i really was not going to talk about that woman but like i said to you before i stopped on tiktok and there was no so many stupid stuff going on over there because i posted a little clip and I said that I just couldn't believe that people were voting for that woman just because she was a woman. We are in 2024, ladies and gentlemen. There is no, there is no way that you should cast such an important vote, not even a vote. Like, I don't understand that you guys are not understanding those elections and to see the play out and to see how people are saying things like, I'm voting for her because she's a woman. Oh my God, please. So anyways, like I said in the promotional video, the focus of this live is to discuss tactics and strategies, the significant approach of our candidate regarding US foreign affairs, economy, both internal and external, immigration policies and business. I talked about we will measure our candidate approach against that of BRICS, both economically and the policy making, the current state of Africa, the Russia Ukraine conflict, as well as the Palestine and Israel conflict. Because over here, what we do, we do global analysis, we look at things from different perspectives, we're looking at the fact why. I mean, do you not? There's. It's, not even a question so i'm gonna read my notes okay i'm gonna read part of my notes because i have a lot going on over here let's start i said the 2024 u.s election is one of the most crucial piece of the puzzle regarding the shift of the world it will dictate future movement regarding economics policy making contract jobs and immigration policies the Biden administration has had an afflux of immigrants flooding to the United States, diminishing, diminishing drastically the job market for all of its citizens. Through their recent program, which opened in January 2023, two countries such as Haiti, Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua emptying each with an unidentified number many who left hey though though many who left haiti are lawful citizen we can't ignore that many who came through this program are part 
or just as well criminals or individuals who've engaged recently in major criminal activities. Now, you know, to be really honest with you guys, a video or a live of that caliber is exposing myself, but hey, because this is the truth. And over here, what I do is I tell you the truth. What you guys are not aware of and what I've never really wanted to talk about is the madness that has been going on with immigration and the flood of so many people to the United States. Here, I'm talking from my country. What some of you are not aware of is that many people, although they entered the Biden program lawfully and although they probably are, you know, people who are in seeking opportunities, what you're not seeing is that because of this madness that was going down here and that's still currently presently going on in Haiti, you have a massive of individuals who have entered criminal activities is the truth. And even while they were here in Haiti and they were dabbling in those activities, they still had family members who probably didn't know that they were engaged in those activities who still applied for them to, those, to this program and they got there. So when President Trump is talking about that so many people are coming into the USA and are gang members, drug lord, he knows what he's talking about. And the reality is that it is the truth. It's such a sensitive topic because as a Haitian person, do you know how many people look at me sideways because of the stance that I take? But it's because people are not really understanding. Do you know how many people who were already, even people who are in law enforcement here in Haiti? Oh my God, this, 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 I don't know. I just feel like I don't even know how to express all that I have inside of here. I wish that I could take all of you and have you go inside my brain so that you saw what I saw, you understood the things that I understood and you were like, okay, hold up. So let me paint a picture. And here I'm only talking about my country. You have a government who was so bent over the fact that they wanted control of this land, correct? We've talked about natural resources We've talked about countries moving into ground zero. We've talked about everything going into the digital mark. We've talked about natural resources, minerals that this country has, and the richness that this country represents globally. I'm talking about Haiti, right? If you're not familiar with my work, please watch a few of the lives or a few of the videos from the DL consulting firm, right, so that you get caught up. So they created this chaos that we have here in Haiti. They created the madness that we've been enduring here in Haiti, the flooding of guns, the, op the operation, the military strategy. You know, they sponsored so many of those supposedly gang leaders that now they're turning around and want that their head on a silver platter. This is the Biden administration that has been sponsoring everything that's been going on here in Haiti, correct? So as they are sponsoring this madness and this country went into total shock, it was a pretty much a recruitment. You had almost, I don't want to say all of our youth, but you had a great majority of our youth who went and some of them didn't have a choice. Because when you are living in impoverished cities and you can't feed your families and you have now a leader who's telling you that you need to become a gang leader and they're giving you guns and weapons, where are you going to go? Where are you going to escape? The Haitian government has always been itself very incompetent. So a lot of our youth didn't have a choice. But to get involved into those madness, right? So as you have them enter now a criminal lane, you still remain a criminal because habits, right? Psychologically, if you do something once, even if you did it out of fear, if you, I mean, 
I've never been into a gang, but I know the training or it's kind of like if you are not doing certain things, people start to look at you funny, like how bad do you want to be part of those gangs? So as these individuals were getting themselves into those criminal activities, they still were seeking to get out of this country because they didn't want to be a part of the, no gangs. They don't want to be a part of no gangs. They didn't have a choice, so they got into it. But as soon as the Biden administration came with that program last year, if you remember it, January 2023, I believe, as soon as they came with that program, a lot of these kids, some of their family members probably, heck, never knew that they were into those activities. Because let's be really honest. I mean, even if you talk to a, a teenager, a young adult, the person is not really going to tell you that, hey, listen, auntie, hey, listen, uncle, hey, listen, mom, dad, I've gotten myself involved into certain situations. They're not. Remember what we said? Opportunities. They're probably looking at it like, hey, it's opportunity for me. Hey, I'm still making a few bucks. Right? Because I live in this country, babe. There, it's a shutdown. This country has been shut down since prior to the assassination. But with the assassination, I mean, listen, we all saw what went down in Haiti. So don't sit here and tell me that there was any type of work opportunities. Work opportunity for who? Work opportunity where? Work opportunity how? Huh. So you had these kids who didn't have a choice and who were looking at those criminal activities like, well, at least I'll feed myself. At least I'll feed my families. So they got involved into these activities to have pocket money. But even so, that's still a criminal lane. So you become a criminal. So now your thought process, because to be a criminal, to be in certain environment, your mindset has to shift and has to change. You guys are not aware of what we went through here in Haiti. People driving by dead bodies after dead bodies on the streets. Kids going to school and parents crossing over dead bodies to bring their kids to school. IT is a country that has become immune to death, especially the certain cities. You guys saw how a lot of these kids or these people who became criminals, they had no type of feelings. They went into a hospital in Mirbalet. They gunned down the hospital, specifically the ICU, the NICU, where preemies were there. I covered that. Why? Because the Biden administration wanted the OK cave to have the Kenyan force come down here to Haiti. And at the time, the prime minister of Haiti was beating his time with, they did not want for this force to come to Haiti. So they went higher and higher and higher with their insecurities. A lot of those people who were a part of these gangs, I'm telling you that many of them went to the USA through the Biden program. So now you have criminals in your country because at the end of the day, they are still criminals. Once you engage in an activity, you take part in an activity once, twice, three times, four times, you become a criminal. So if you are accustomed to kill someone, guess what? It's not going to be a problem for you to do so again. If you are accustomed to do certain type of activity, guess what? It's, it starts to be because it's habits. You are creating certain type of habits. This is all thanks to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And these are the people that you want to continue to elect because whoever says Joe Biden says Kamala Harris. Whoever says Kamala Harris says Joe Biden. Same administration. It's not new. It's not like you guys are getting a new person. 
It's not like you guys are getting a new administration. These are the people that you want to put in power for another four years. Oh my God, please tell me no. Huh? Oh no, it's a no. So when Trump is talking about immigration policy, you got all people saying shit. Like even with these Haitians, I'm not even going to go there with them because they don't know if they are coming or going at this point. I, I just feel bad for them. I feel bad for them because you, of course you have, you know, it's, we're looking at things like a different perspective. So I'm not looking at, you know, what went down in Haiti the same way that someone who was probably living in shanty neighborhood or any neighborhood, hell, we went through hell over here where we stayed. It was everywhere. If it wasn't the kidnapping, it was a gun, you know, the, it was crazy what we went through. And still goes through, we're gonna we're gonna finish our notes. Right? So you mean to tell me that. These people who left, who, who fe they felt like by all means necessary, it's an opportunity for me to go. And I mean, let's not compare a country like the U.S. and a, comp a country like Haiti. So you have people who never left Haiti who are finally able to look at different things. And they're looking at it like, oh, my God, this is so beautiful. Oh, my God, this is so good. But those of us who are well-traveled or well-read or who understands the world, we know that this the U.S. is losing ground. As far as like a superpower, it is. And guess what? If you guys elect Kamala Harris, you guys are going to become just like Haiti. <laughs> it's going to get even worse for you guys. I'm telling you, you better not do this to yourself. I'm telling you. You better not do this to yourself. Okay, let's continue the notes. Where was I? So, I said that. Okay. Whether in law enforcement or any other government rule, one cannot ignore the turnaround that the country of Haiti suffered with the support of the Biden administration after the assassination of our president, which propelled almost all of our youth and young adults into gang activities. We just talked about that. Those same individuals being employed to do the beating of those individuals were also able to get family members to sponsor them into the Biden program. We just talked about that. Therefore, can we truthfully incriminate President Trump when he speaks on the madness of the Biden's immigration policy? Here, I'm only speaking about the country of Haiti. There are three other countries left out without mentioning Mexico and the others, meaning what? If you're not familiar with the Biden, what I'm talking about with the program, it's a program that, you know, Joe Biden opened two years ago to receive immigrants. And I covered this. He, and he only opened it to Haiti. He opened it to Cuba. He opened it to Venezuela. He opened it to Nicaragua. He opened it to all the countries where the U.S. government had an issue with this government. And from Haiti, oh my God. When this program opened, ay, ay, ay. I did not experience it. But listen, for the people, oh, listen, I don't even want to say, I don't even know how. I want to explain to you. Listen, let me tell you something. The country of I, because I just want you to understand this, this live is for my U.S. citizen people so that you understand the gimmick and what these people are trying to do. But I want to, for you to understand what the Biden administration has been doing specifically in a country like Haiti and why you should not even consider a woman like Kamala Harris as your candidate. It's a no. Right? When you think about the country like Haiti, it has 10 departments. Unfortunately, the only functioning 
department is the capital, which is Paul Prince. And Paul Prince is where you literally are getting everything done, like every government, every documentation that you need. You got to come here to Paul Prince to do it. So when Biden opened this program, you had people, it's kind of like, let's just say that if you are like in the U.S., there's 50 states. Let's just say it's only one operational state that this is where you can get all of your government ID. So we're going to say that it's New York City. It's the biggest state where you can get all the government ID, like for the USA, just so that you got uh, you have an understanding. So you have now people who understood that, okay, there's this opportunity. So you had people who didn't have any passport, who didn't have anything. So they're coming from Midwest. They're coming from the South. They're coming from, you know, the, 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 they're coming from everywhere, right? Just to go to New York so that they can get passport done. So that's what happened in Haiti in those last two years. Last year, it was crazy. And remember what we always say. There's always an opportunity somewhere. So as soon as the offices started to see that so many people were flooding, guess what? Let's just roughly say that a passport to get done in Haiti would be like, we're just going to say 60 bucks, right? These people, of course, triple the price. If I had some clips, I would have probably inserted it here for you. It felt like it was the lane. You had people who made the journey. So from, let's just say, I don't know, what's the furthest states from New York, right? So think about that. So you make the journey to go to, to your, to finally to get to New York. And then when you get there, you had people who were sleeping in those offices, like say in the post office, sleeping outside, waiting. And now you got all type of people outside saying, hey, I can get you a passport. Hey, I'm going to give you a passport. This is through the program. There are people who, who didn't have anyone to apply for them to the program. So they cut through. They went through Nicaragua. I just wish that many, if not all, of the U.S. citizens were well aware of the dearth that this government has been doing. And I clearly remember when Trump was talking about this was when he was campaigning the last time when they stole his election. He was talking about the money flow that's going in those borders. It's a commerce, big commerce. I know people here in Haiti to get to the U.S., they literally sold everything just to make that journey, that transition, paying for passport here, paying this and, you know, giving money left and right. People becoming pregnant just because they wanted to get by and pregnant women were the most vulnerable. So you had those border patrol who would not rape them, who would not hurt them. Trump talked about that. He expressed the, the madness that's going on with the immigration. Why are you guys not understanding that? Why are you guys not wanting to hear what he has to say? He's not lying. He's telling the truth. I mean, for, I don't even want to say black people anymore because I'm just tired of the whole black and white shit. I'm sorry. I'm not a part of that. I don't want to be a part of what you guys have going on over there with your black, white shit thing. But what I will say is that the way things are going for the U.S., and let me be really honest, for those of you who are probably already struggling in the USA, you might as well come down to Haiti because, sweetie, it's empty for us over here. And shit is about to go down. So you might as well come 
Because some of you, if you decide to move back to or to look into Haiti, the turnaround will be big. So you might, you know, the real thing about this work is so weird because as someone who is a business consultant, I should be looking at this whole gimmick as an opportunity for me to have more clients. I should not even be offended or upset about the situation because I should look at it like, mm -hmm. let me start encouraging the American people to look into a country like Haiti. But at the end of the day, I really would not want my worst enemy to go through what I went through in this country. And looking at what you guys are going through in your country over there, I don't even want to be over there. So this is why at least I'm letting you understand to look at things from a different perspective. Because if you're not looking at things from a different perspective, let me know how things start looking out for you in about two years of that woman in power. Please tell me that it's a bad, bad, and bad joke. Please tell me that it's a bad joke. Let's continue the read. I said that it has been and continues to be a complete mess, which has dissolved not only family structure, but the entire, the entire economy of our country without diving into all of the money laundering from people wanting to come to the United States through various passages. So can the Biden administration safely say that it knows and can attest to all immigrants in the last, let's just say two years? Absolutely not. This administration has supported major chaos such as the political crisis in Haiti, the current war in Ukraine and now supporting an alliance with Israel instead of deviating through conflict resolution, their issues with Palestine. I don't think we need, I don't think I need to exp explain anything here. I think we all understand. I don't think there's anything that I need to explain. Correct? So let's continue. I said... Presently, the <laughs> okay, let's get let's really get down to business. Presently, rent for the average US citizen is ridiculously expensive. Owners continue to raise prices while many are out of the job and cannot make ends meet. The majority of U.S. citizens are finding themselves homeless, unable to pay their mortgage, their car notes, groceries, and basic utilities. Shelters are no longer opening nor receiving people and now are threatening to put out immigrants in order to make space for U.S. citizens. Meanwhile, the current administration signed over more than $200 billion. Let's, let, let me come close. Let me, let me, let me reread this for you because I want us to understand the gimmick, okay? Let, let's understand the gimmick. Let me reread because I want, I want you guys to understand. I said, presently, Rent for the average U.S. citizen is ridiculously expensive. Owners continue to raise prices while many are out of the job and cannot make ends meet. The majority of U.S. citizens are finding themselves homeless, unable to pay their mortgage, car notes, buy groceries, and pay for basic utilities. Shelters are no longer opening nor receiving people and now are threatening to put out immigrants in order to make space for U.S. citizens, correct? <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, the current administration signed over more than $200,000 billion to the government of William Wuto for an 
unconstitutional occupation of the country of Haiti. The irony of the situation is that while the money has been delivered, not only has Kenya seen an uprising of violence demanding the resignation of President Uto, <sighs> meanwhile, here in Haiti, with the arrival of the Kenyan soldiers, we have seen an actually uprising of violence in all parts of the country, and our roads now have been cut through to prevent the arrival of those forces in certain neighborhoods. So now the current U.S. administration has yet to allocate more equipment, such as helicopters to those Kenyan soldiers. And this will yet again come from where? The Federal Reserve Bank? Please make it make sense. This is really a situation that should be laughable, comical. It's, it's, it's such a poor joke. It's a bad joke. So you have a country. I have a lot of people. I mean, listen, I, I lived in the U.S., so I know the situation. Rent is going crazy. A one-bedroom is over $2,000. So many people are in shelters. So many of those people who came through the Biden program are also in shelters. Recently, I was listening to a report from Boston. And they were saying that they just were on shelters, were unable to receive people. So who's the fault? Who's who has created this madness? Were people, you know, who's, do you understand how things intertwine? So now shelters cannot support the Africa of immigrants. They are saying that they're going to have to let the immigrants go because they still need space for U.S. citizen people who can't afford to pay their bills. <laughs> When I tell you this is a bad joke, this is this is this is a bad joke. Okay, so that's what's going on in your country. So what is your government doing for that? They are actually continuing to equip and give money to other government for what? You saw everything that they went through to have those Kenyan comes. It's a $200,000, $200 billion that they offered the government of William Wuto to come here to Haiti. And this is the numbers that is floating around, but I believe that it's a little more than that. I feel like I believe that $200 billion is for the force but I do believe that they cut out an extra 100 to William Wuto for his own pocket. I don't believe that those 200 on, was only the, this only money. Mm -mm. But meanwhile, so many people can't breed in the U.S. Make it make sense. Please just uh, see. I'm only touching. I'm I'm only touching on Haiti. With I haven't even touched on Ukraine. What? How much money they? <laughs> how much money they got going on over there? And how much money now they got going on with Israel? What's left for the U.S. people? Talk to me. Let me know. With. The way that they're going around and giving money here, giving money there, let's let's keep Haiti there, okay? We're making the... How is that going for you people over there? Which I saw, I remembered when they were supposed to allocate the money and the Biden administration, Kamala Harris, they all came out with saying how much money that they wanted to support with Haiti. Congress, the Republican, they try, they try to block that. But because people have a screwed vision of politics and they are not seeing things for what they truly are, they started to scream that the USA 
was not willing to support Haiti. Meanwhile, the majority, if not all of the chaos came from them, but not all of it, the majority came from them. Let's continue. The good thing about this is that when I started to see the turnaround, as soon as, and I told him, I kept saying, I told you, I said to Wuto, you are not invited in this country. Personal, personal non grata. I told you, don't sign this bullshit. Don't come here with your, your, your goddamn soldiers. But you would not listen. You were greedy. All you were thinking about was the money. So now, how is that going for you in Kenya? I heard that they, are, they want you to resign. Okay, let's continue. We all can attest to the failure of this administration. Nothing positive has come except of we are except if we're looking from different lens. People who could have not left certain countries such as Haitians are now living in the United States. But honestly, under which condition? We just talked about that. Now let's look into BRICS. <laughs> In January 2024, we welcome the integration of many other countries into this union, such as Saudi Arabia, Argentina, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates, strengthening and deepening geopolitical ties, leaving the United States far behind. This is where I'm at with my notes. I was writing a lot. I didn't get to finish my notes, but let's just, let me go with my, my mind and then you guys will get a video. So when it comes to BRICS, BRICS has already launched its money. They are already making currency like interchangeably working with their own money. The dollar is losing its grips, not as fast because you still understand that still the dollar has its value. It's the main money that is currently used in Haiti. We've touched on that before. But with BRICS, you do have now other you know not only the opportunity to trade with that type of money but also for countries like Haiti to enter BRICS partnership agreements listen so now listen i don't live in your country anymore you tell me if you believe that the candidacy of someone like Kamala Harris is going to support the United States to go to strengthen its economy against such a, a, a power like BRICS. Is this administration that you guys currently have capable of doing that? Because at the end of the day, there's no difference. She's still the vice president and it's like, it's not, there's no difference. So for people who are looking at it and who are pretending or saying things like they want to vote for her because she's a woman, what, what, where's the result, guys, that this administration has given? What's the result? Let, let's just be honest. What is the result? My student is just, my client just wrote to me. I'm still working. I'm not done with my program. What, what is the result, ladies and gentlemen? So you mean to tell me as a vice president, she is incompetent, but they're putting her as a president. So where exactly do you people want this country to go? <laughs> I cannot believe this. Do you believe that Kamala Harris can safely take on the reign of the president of the United States in such time, in such dear times? Do you safely believe that? You let me know. 
after you've watched my life, you let me know if you safely believe that the Kamala Harris has the, the grits to run the country of the United States in such crucial time. What is their policies regarding foreign affairs? Look at the garbage that they've made in Haiti. It's all them. If today you guys probably are sitting down with criminals, it's thanks to the Biden administration. They are the ones who don't know how to operate. They don't know how to write policy immigration. They don't know what they're doing. So you mean to tell me that you guys want to sign up for another four years of this nonsense? Well, listen, to my people who understand what I'm saying, I'm letting you know, Haiti is open and you might as well come down to Haiti, babe, and redo your life. Sign up for a consultation. I will take you, baby. I do excellent work. If these people want to put Kamala, just... Let bygone be bygone because this is not going to bode well for any one of you. No. Absolutely no. Anyways, I will be here. I was not expecting. I really was not expecting. Like I said to you, I'm still working. So I was not expecting to come on live, but I, I'm seeing the gimmick. I'm seeing the gimmick. I'm seeing the I'm voting for her because she's a woman. I'm seeing the I'm voting for her because she's black. I'm seeing the, oh, they don't want to vote for Trump because he's a convicted felon. I'm seeing the, oh, they don't want to. It's like just the little video and the little clip that I've posted on TikTok and the reply. It's like the U.S., you guys, are conditioned. And that's where they have you. They knew. They studied that. Oh, my God. I just cannot. I just can't get up. I can't believe it. It's, it's like I got shit to do. Now you guys are giving me work. Because I'm not going to let this shit happen like that. I'm, I'm real good in my work. Oh, no, no, no. No. Absolutely not. So now you guys are giving me work. Because I, because that's, they're coming out of the woodwork, these black women. Every day, every other day, it's an interview. These Democrats. Oh, yeah. And I forgot to touch on Project 2025, which I was, you know, made aware of not so long ago. And I started, listen, like, like I said to you before, this is more of a live from me to the American people. But now we just got the ball ready. So I, today is what? Today is Sunday, is it? No, today is Saturday. I think I'm, I, I don't got a choice but to be back on live every week to do more work and to post videos to inform people because um, the elections of November 2024, it's going to be everything. It's not a joke shit. Those election, it's not a joke shit. And I do understand for my Haitian people that a lot of you, even with the family members that I have, people feel, they're, they're, they don't feel a certain type of way. I'm talking about probably distant relatives. They are surprised, but I've always been a Trump supporter because I can see where he is standing and the majority of everything that he says is the truth. I live in Haiti and I see the madness, the gimmick and everything else. Unfortunately, the Haitian people are not understanding that they're looking at it like, okay, which I understand. So this is why I said when I started this live that I am playing devil's advocate because when you think about it, you're looking at someone who probably sold everything that they had to escape Haiti, to move to the United States. And then they have in their mind that once Trump becomes the president, then automatically he's going to send people back, which Trump is saying so, but it takes more than that. It's, you know, 
even for him being in office, he has so much work to do in the first 90 days, you know? So if something like that were to come for it, it would not come for it, not until after another year. And you also have to remember, guys, this is for my Haitian people, that I always tell you that when it comes to politics and when it comes to campaign, the very first thing that you're trying to do, you're trying to win, right? This is why a lot of people had a lot of problem with Trump, his first time go around, because he went against black people. He was saying a lot of crazy stuff, but he had to come like that. He had to come radical. He had to come so harsh because he was competing against a beast. He was competing against a woman who knew politics like the back of her hand. He was competing against Hillary Clinton. So he came out strong. He came out, you know, he had to win an audience. Do you get it? This is why I want you, what I really want to ingrain, especially in the head of the youth, because your vote, this is, this is what they're going for. They're going for those youth vote, those women's vote, those black people's vote, those immigrants who can vote, um, who can vote votes. Those are the votes that they need. Because they're looking at it like the majority of American people are saying, okay, we're voting Trump. They're saying we're voting Trump. So they were really down on their luck because black people were not voting for them. And people who could have voted, they were looking at it like, mm, we're not voting for Biden. So they had to have someone there to win. And as soon as she came, all these other women madness oh i'm voting women right women da, 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 da. it's like oh my god it's a game it's a game that they're playing don't let this happen guys i'm already thankfully thankfully you know just just to see how I stood my ground and now I can breathe a little bit because I created something for myself. So to be really honest, I don't have the needs nor these days the desire to reside in a country that the United States because I know how the economy is over there. And thankfully, like I said to you, I was able to create something for myself and I can leave off of that. But what I'm telling you guys is this. If you want to give yourself a little break, please, I really would encourage you to reconsider big time. You better reconsider Kamala Harris as the next U.S. president. Baby, this is not going to bode well. Absolutely not. So I'm going to leave you tonight and I'm going to continue with my notes. The video is going to come out this week over in my consulting page, DL Consulting Firm 83. Stay connected with me over there. Stay connected on all my social media platform. Baby, it's on. Okay, we are going to put out those videos out. We are going to come back on live weekly. We're going to discuss. We're going to debate. We're going to make sure that people understand the importance of those U.S. elections and that what we're doing, we are voting Trump 2024. There is no other way to go. Okay, thank you so much for being here with me. I will see you very soon. Stay connected on the YouTube channel. I will be dropping some videos because we are not doing that. Uh -uh. We're not letting people play with our mind. Not with those elections. Nope, we're not doing that. 